Hi, welcome to Conversion Conversations. This is Cameron, and today I am taking a look at Transformers Masterpiece Beast Wars MP46 uh, Black Widow or Black Arachnia. Um, she's a really beautiful toy. Um, I've been playing around with her. Uh, I was really worried about kind of the, the frailty of a Black Arachnia figure, um, but she's just a ton of fun to mess around with. And what I found is she's, like, I know there have been some concerns about how well she locks together in spider mode. Um, but this spider mode here in front of us is really, really solid. And in addition to that, um, oh, this is just uh, her little hookshot piece. Uh, when I first did my unboxing video, I had some concerns about whether or not the legs can hold up uh, her weight of her spider body. Um, but... In playing around with it, I found that all you have to do is kind of flip uh, these ball joints. Let's see if she's going to make a liar out of me. There we go. Yeah, we can bring this down just a little bit. But yeah, you can see, like, there is plenty of room underneath her. Um, all I did was flip these ball joints around in spider mode, and she holds herself up just fine. Uh, we can do a quick 360 of her. Um, and again, like this has the issue that other Beast Wars figures have, which is to get as accurate a CG model of the robot mode as possible, um, some trade-offs have to be made. I am impressed in person um, how well the uh, spider body blends together. You know, you get these legs on the sides, but I don't think that's a huge deal in the end especially for how good her robot uh, mode looks. But yeah, in terms of spider articulation, we do get uh, kind of mouth wiggle. Uh, these pincers can move in and out just fine. The head can move up and down and rotate side to side. So like there's a lot of expressiveness in this spider head. And then each of these legs, they're on a ball joint and then a hinge joint they can go wherever you want them to be. You can you can totally do the like curled up dead spider thing if you really wanted to. Um, I'm just, I was kind of expecting this mode to be ancillary to the robot mode, but they put a lot of time and, and effort into making this as poseable as possible. And it, yeah, if I spread the legs out too far, um, then her center of gravity isn't underneath her legs and she has trouble standing but there we go yeah she's just fine standing up that's pretty high off the ground uh, to do a comparison here is the only other black arachnia figure I have uh, this is Beast Machine's black arachnia which has you know four legs and then four smaller legs um, different designs obviously but I think this goes to show the difference between calling this a deluxe figure and a masterpiece figure. Um, you get the intricate details in the paint job. You get, you know, fully formed legs instead of these splitsies half legs. Um, I am really happy with this uh, Black Arachnia. She is on the pricey side uh, for her size. She cost me a hundred bucks to get from Japan. Um, I think I would have been even happier with her if she was 80, but as is, I'm pretty happy. And I, I just noticed this, and I went and checked on the model. I don't know if you guys knew, but Black Arachne apparently has nine eyes in her CGI model. She doesn't have eight eyes like any other spider. Um, but yeah, as for Black Arachne spider mode, uh, she is pretty cool. We can go into all her accessories that make up kind of the rest of her price point. Uh, she does come with a stand, which is nice after Megatron. I was worried that they were just expecting us to use more Dinobot stand. Um, she does have an articulated stand arm that has nice ratchets on it. This spider web can come off. We can put that arm back. And it hooks together. You have this Y hook that lets you do different things in terms of stand use, uh, especially with a robot mode. And then this spider web is actually four of these pieces, which have holes on one side and pegs on the other side. So those hook up together to give you her spider web. And of course this means you can build things out. I wish this was even more modular. I would have loved um, 
what I would have loved would have been to have holes and pegs on the outside. So if you really wanted to just be an insane person, you could build up, uh, let me see if I can get things. There we go. You could build the web out as much as you wanted. Um, but as is, it's still a great web. And I was, the other thing I was concerned about was this blue plastic look. Um, for some reason I got, oop, backwards. For some reason, I was hoping at first that this would be clear plastic. Not for some reason. I was hoping at first that this would be clear plastic so that we uh, got more of a spiderweb look. Um, but against a white background like this, you can kind of see it help, It does help the web stand out. And it does look kind of Energon colored. Um, as far as her other accessories, I think everything else really is more for her robot mode. So let's go ahead and get her transformed. Uh, and her transformation is not that complicated, especially for a Beast Wars figure. We're going to start out by separating out uh, this part of her abdomen. I think this is an abdomen, right? Not a thorax. Um, which lets us pull this section away from the rest of her body. We're going to set that gun to the side. Now that this is uh, disconnected, we can unhook uh, this back flap from her knee slots which lets us kind of get her legs out of the way. We'll unfold these bad boys out here. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and collapse this thigh piece. It's on a double joint. We can just collapse that in on both sides, uh, filling out her thighs and then flip out her knee spikes. Uh, now that her knee spikes are flipped out, we can come in at the bottom. There's a little tab we can pull to pull out her heels. That'll help her stand a lot better. There we go. The hips have a lot of double jointed, uh, have double jointed posability in them. You don't really need them for either mode, but you can uh, use those to widen out her hips if you really, really wanted to. But uh, we'll, we'll see how it looks um, like this. Then we can come in and now we unpeg her arms, her claw hands from each other. Those separate out and we can flip down her crotch for a little bit swivel around her arms to bring her arms uh, down in a neutral position. Same thing on this side, swivel those bad boys around, flip around her spider legs, get those out of the way for now. Then we're gonna come up, we're going to swivel her spider head around 180, and it's going to come in, actually before we do that, we wanna bring her head and everything forward uh, there is a, uh, in transformation, this kind of locks tight. I brought this down without mentioning it. Um, we can open up and flip out, untab here, and flip out her chest piece, as well as her head, comes out from behind her spider thorax. Uh, now that that is out of the way, we can come in on the bottom here, and bring down this spider head, which lets us collapse her, uh, I don't know what you call that, waist bikini line around that spider piece. Get things down and collapsed. Oop, I think this should be one further. That lets us bring her neck and shoulder assembly down, which also brings her bosom down. There we go. And it all locks into place. And now we've got, and these spider legs do get in the way, but I mean, that is a big part of her CGI model. Now all we've got is this backpack, which you can collapse in a couple different ways. I'll put that back in a second. Um, you can kind of collapse it it's on a triple segmented joint. You can collapse it down this way and hold it kind of tight against her back. You can fold this in and bring it down lower to try and get rid of uh, what's behind her shoulders. Um, I like it just flat against her back like this. And these legs, as we see, are on very simple three quarter cut ball joints that we can just plug right back in. Um, they catch, the, the biggest thing that makes them fall off, I think, is just them catching on each other. Uh, but I think folding them back like this 
keeps things out of our way. And now we've got Black Arachnia all transformed. And she looks awesome. I mean, look, look at, uh, yeah, just a great sculpt. The, right, hands down the best Black Arachnia, uh, Beast Wars Black Arachnia we've ever had. Um, she looks awesome. She can hold on to her gun. You fold out these flaps here, fold this down, give her her harpoon, and now we've got a weapon that she can hold without any problems. Her claw just fits right around that. She can also, uh, I think she's got a port, uh, yeah, at the, the bottom here that we can set her in to get her kind of her, there we go. Oh. Let's tilt this up just a bit. Yeah, so you can get her set up kind of crouching and waiting in her spider web, which is awesome. Um, I am overall really impressed by the just the natural posability of this figure. She is on the smaller side for a masterpiece, yes, but Black Widow was a small robot even for Beast Wars. Um, she has just, I think where the money went was designing her to look like the model in robot mode and then getting the most posability out of her as possible. She has great articulation in her neck. That is very expressive and a very nice head sculpt. And it has like a, oop, lock that back down. It has really great movement and it's a double jointed neck piece, which is awesome. Uh, her shoulders, they go 360. They ha actually go 360 in two places. They go 360 on this shoulder pauldron piece and then in the ball joint. They also go beyond the normal 90. Like she can go, you know, really high up with her arm, which is terrific. Her arms are double jointed. Um, they have, oh, flip it around. There we go. Yeah, natural double jointed action, which is terrific. Um, she has bicep swivel in two places. She has wrist swivel in addition to the bicep swivel. Like you can do whatever you want with her arms. Her claws are also double jointed. Uh, they can, you know, open up like that, no problem. They have these toe claw pieces. So you can get, you know, whatever kind of motion you want out of her hands. Uh, you know, with only two digits, they still did plenty. And then she's got this awesome, like, she's got ab crunch forward, backward, side to side. Um, in addition to that, she's got her, you know, high kick, back kick, outward kick. That joint moves if you need to do something crazy with it, you know, get her in like an extreme crouching pose or something like that. Her knees are double jointed. Um, her feet move back and forth an incredible amount. They also have extreme toe tilt. Just a super posable uh, spider femme fatale we have on our hands. Just looking great. And here is Beast Machine's Black Arachnia. And as we can see, you know, both sultry spider ladies in their own right, but there is a big difference in engineering. I, I know, like, I might be the only one clamoring for Beast Machine's uh, masterpiece figures, but I love this design. Her Transmetal 2 design I didn't really pay much attention to in the show. Um, I love this design. I'd love to see this get this sort of treatment. Uh, Black Arachnia just looks awesome. And she looks even better stacked with her fellow Beast Wars teammates. Now we don't have a Masterpiece Tarantulas yet, uh, which I would be also super excited to get. But we have plenty of her maximal comrades to hang out with Black Arachne. And obviously, yeah, like I said, she is on the small side, but that is very in character. You know, that's that's to the show, which I like. Um, I like that these guys look like they walked off the screen together. I can't wait to see, hopefully we get an Air Razor along with Tigertron soon. Um, I, I, any, 
of the season one cast they do, I will be excited for. Even season two, like, um, I need a silver bolt to hang out with Black Arachnia because I really loved their story as a couple. Um, the way they brought out the best in each other. Um, just all around very, very happy with her. Oh, I've, I've actually been gushing so much I forgot about all her other accessories. And she does come with more than just the net, obviously, to make up that price point. So she does come with, let's put this to the side. She does come with a version of her hook shot, her grapple gun, whatever you want to call this, um, that has the string attached. So you can kind of do whatever you want with, with this hook shot piece. Um, she also comes with alternate faces, which I probably should have tried to take off before recording this just to make sure, but I think I can just get up behind her chin. Because usually this face swapping is pretty simple. Yeah, we can pull that face off and we have... Kind of in comparison to her like smirky face, we have just a more neutral face. And in addition to that one, we have the green eyes, the angry face. Someone did something to Silver Bolt and now she's pissed face, which I like a lot. So we've got options there, which I'm glad that the Beast Wars figures have been giving us plenty of face options. We also have, let me put, uh, let's put this one. I like her smirk. She's always had a very pretty smirk. Uh, in addition to that, we have her visor set. And this, I think, is from the episode where she wanted to get, like, trans metal powers. Um, so we, we've got the visor set, and it comes with a detachable cable, which we have a spare of, which is nice. I'm hoping that maybe we build out some additional accessories there. And finally, we've got, if I can pull it out, there it is, an add-on piece uh, to her stand just to help her hook up in more ways than uh, she had previously. So, my final thoughts on Black Rachnia pricey i think even with everything we're getting if she was an 85 dollar masterpiece figure like top tier for the year favorite toy easy at a hundred bucks 105 bucks depending on what you're paying to get her um still super happy but i recognize that really only there for the super fans like me i am so glad i have this black arachnia figure i am so happy to have her in my collection I highly recommend her to anyone who loved Beast Wars. If you did it, you know, it's an easy way to check out some really cool articulation engineering in Transformers. Because um, I think in terms of posability, this is probably the most posable toy we've gotten um, ever. Like this is, in my eyes, this is what a Revel Tech Black Arachnia would have looked like. Um, just terrific. Uh, easy recommendation, but again, to the target audience. All right, uh, that's it for Black Arachnia. Thanks for hanging out and listening to me gush, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Have a great day, everyone.